Eyes on Longmont, offering a diversity of topics about our community that will inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy this edition of Eyes on Longmont. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. It's a great day. That's what we say. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Longmont. Hello, my, my name is Abe Melendez. Uh, I am 63 years old. We came to Colorado in 1965. Uh, both of my parents are from Mexico. Uh, my dad's name is Juan, my mother's name is Luz. And uh, we come from a very big family. Uh, my mother had 12 siblings. My dad came from a family of 11. They're, they were both from small towns in Mexico. And uh, at the age of 16, my dad uh, lost his father. He was a, some type of authority figure in Mexico and was killed by an outlaw. My grandmother uh, had 11 children from 20 all the way down to, to, inf to an infant. So at the age of about 17, my father came to the United States to, to go to work to try to help his family. He went back to Mexico and eventually signed up with the Bracero program, which is a worker, alien worker program, where the, the contract between the United States and Mexico, they would come to the border and then the, the, the employers that wanted, they needed workers, whether it was production or, or, or uh, laborers. Uh, my father was unskilled, so he, he um, uh, when they asked for ranch hands, uh, my father moved forward. He was picked by a man. Uh, the the, the gentleman had a worker told them to uh, told the worker to take my dad to the back and have him saddle a horse. Well, my dad knew about ranching, so he was hired. I think he had to work in the ranch for two years, and then they would sponsor him with a with a green card. After about three years, he said, "I packed up my bags, and um, I went down past the main house." The rancher came out with his, with his wife and he said, what are you doing, Juan? And he said, well, he said, I, you, you, you promised me that you would grant me uh, a, my green card in two years. He said, I've been here about three years and I'm going to go find a rancher that will do that. And he said, I, I apologize. And he said, the only thing I ask of you is that you train the next, the next person, stay here long enough to train the next person. And Dad said, I, I, out of respect, I stayed there for quite a, 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 a you know, less than a year, but uh, a long time. The only person I saw was a rancher every, every so often that would fly by in his plane and drop a stack of letters and some candy bars out of the plane, you know, when he was coming by me. Went back to Mexico, married my mother, and uh, came to El Paso. There's six of us. I've got a brother and four sisters, and uh, we were all born in El Paso. My dad was working for Standard Oil uh, in 1965 when a cousin of his in Longmont called him and said, uh, uh, they're needing workers, they're needing laborers at, the, at this turkey plant. So my dad asked him, uh, what do they pay? And he said, a dollar an hour. He said, I'm making a dollar an hour now, and the cost of living in El Paso is a lot less than in Colorado. His cousin said the magic word. He said, we have a lot of overtime. And my dad was on a bus uh, shortly after that and arrived in Longmont. They dropped the passengers off at 3rd and Main. He walked down at the turkey plant and uh, his cousin asked him, are you ready to work? And he said, yes. He started that night shift that night. There, my mother and my father worked there for 25 years. Uh, my dad worked there as a, as a cleanup uh, um, eventually becoming the supervisor for all those 25 years. And my mother worked on a, a production line called the Boning, cutting up meat. 
for 25 years in a wet, uh, cold place. My dad came first, and my then my mother and three of us came after, or four of us came afterwards. My uncle bought his two kids, and, and we bought grandma to take care of the kids. Um, we lived in Firestone. The second year, we moved to Longmont, lived on Roth Rock, which is between Martin and Lashley, in a little house that was uh, had no running water, uh, had an outside bathroom. It was a box car that was put together. We only had a cold stove. We would get water from the owners on a 55-gallon drum, and I think Mother had a, a milk, those metal milk containers that where she used water for, for drinking. After a couple of years, my dad saved up, to, saved up his money and uh, he bought a house on Fifth Avenue. And I remember walking into that house and it had uh, tile entry and carpet. Uh, we still have that house. He, my dad bought it for uh, $10,500 and uh, we still have it. Uh, my sister is going to move into it to take care of my dad. He's 93 now. My mother passed away when she was uh, 63. We went to Columbine Elementary School, and, uh, in those, and uh, on the weekends, our parents would take us out to work the, the sugar beets uh, up on I-25. So we were considered migrant workers, and my sister and I were able to go to migrant school when, uh, uh, in the summer, which we loved because uh, they took us places uh, on field trips, uh, swimming, that type of thing. And uh, one of my fondest memories is the Rainbow Bread Company on I-25 going into to, to Denver. And I can still smell the, uh, the, the bread that was made there. My mother raised us because dad worked night shift every, uh, all his life. And um, so one thing about my mother, she was very big on education. Both my parents only had third grade education, not because they didn't go to school, there was in school. My mother didn't speak English, she didn't drive, but she made every parent-teacher conference that was there. Uh, and I was the interpreter. Uh, she took me to the parent-teacher conference, she grabbed me by the hand, she was tapping my hand, she says, I want you to tell your teacher that he has my permission to spank you if you don't behave. And I, uh, I was looking down and I said, uh, his name was Mr. Mannion. All of us had Mr. Mannion. And I said, Mr. Mannion, uh, my mother says that we're doing very well. And he says, oh yes, oh yes. My mother was typing me, see, see, see. And years later I told her that I had not told him that she could, he could spank us and she said, you're a brat. Uh, one thing I like to say is, is going back on my mother about education. But my mother went back to school at the age of 62 to, uh, to get her education. So she was at El Paso Community College. And they called her the grandmother of, uh, uh, within all the students because she always bought in baked goods for them. But uh, she was trying to learn her English. I remember going back to her house in El Paso and she was, uh, uh, she'd have sticky notes all over the house with, uh, with the way she would uh, spell or, or pronounce the English words. But, uh, uh, education was big. Growing up in Longmont, uh, my dad worked the night shift. My mother made uh, lunch for him every night, so I would I would furry a, a lunch pail to um, to the turkey plant. Rain or snow, I was always there with that lunch box with my mother. And I'd all uh, at times I'd all I'd zip over to a little uh, that little uh, there was like I think it was a pool room on the corner of Main and Second, which was on the northeast side of the, of the street. And there was a pool hall and they had uh, some pinballs in there that I used to spend time in there playing the baseball machine. So uh, that was uh, very fond of that. I went to uh, Longmont Junior High and uh, uh, I was a straight A student because of my mother and my aunt who lived with us, who was a teacher uh, in Mexico and she, she, she made us do homework. So I credit her for some intelligence. And uh, my claim to fame in Longmont Junior High, I was Longmont fastest miler. But that's an, there's a, there should be an asterisk with that because I was Longmont's only miler. They knew me at the turkey plant because 
I always bought my father lunch. And after school was out, I went to the turkey plant to apply for a job. And uh, they, they said, no, I was too young. My, because uh, I wasn't 16 yet, I would be 16 in July, end of July. And uh, so one of the managers who knew me asked my dad, I said, I saw your boy here earlier uh, today, but it wasn't in the evening when he usually brings lunch. And my dad said, yeah, he was here to, to apply for a job. And, he, and the manager said, what, what happened? He said, well, they, he was too young. And the manager said, you tell him to come back, I'll hire him. And I worked there for four years during high school. In the evening, I worked four hours all through my high school years. And then uh, uh, in the summer, I worked full time. But yeah. When I was in high school, it was, uh, back then it was a big cruising community. We all had muscle cars. I had a 57 Chevy uh, that we used to go up and down Main Street. People would come in from uh, uh, outside of uh, the city, from, even from Denver, just to come and cruise in Longmont. Uh, this building, I remember when the, uh, the old building, uh, we used to have a, they had a, uh, a recreation room where it had weights. We'd come in there and use that. Uh, we'd come to the football games on this very uh, spot where uh, the rodeo was. And uh, they had the tractor pulls here. They had the, the gra I graduated on this, on this uh, at the field here. Uh, the rodeos were here. This was a Boulder County Fairgrounds and this, were, this is where uh, um, everything was, was held. Uh, the, I remember Michael O'Shea's, that was one of the, uh, the I think it's the oldest restaurant now. But uh, back to the migrant program, um, we, they nominated us or maybe they, they, they brought a gift to all the migrant families. And uh, they bought us a re-gift, uh, I think I was 12 maybe. And uh, a nice lady came to the house and it was a gift that was re-taped I think the edges were frayed. It was a used gift. It was a mouse trap. I don't know how many people remember the mouse trap. Before she left, she looked around and, and the and the lady says, uh, "I think you I think you guys would probably qualify for assistance." And I told my dad, and I'll never forget the words my dad said. He said, uh, "He said you tell the nice lady, uh, thank you very much for her offer." He says, "I'm the man of the house. I have a job. That's probably for people that really need it." And he thanked her, and, and she left. And when, and when she left, I asked my dad, I said, Dad, why didn't you take the money? You know, we don't have much. And, uh, excuse me. And he said, uh, son, if you ever depend on somebody else to put money in your pocket, you'll never amount to much. <clears throat> so that's the, way, that's the way he lived. We were at uh, Columbine Elementary School. Uh, we loved it. We liked it. And... Uh, my, I have an older sister. We, um, there was, uh, we, we were in the back part of the, of the, of the school. It's around the older part. It was, and in the center, what I remember was it's very open. And uh, this has to do with Christmas. Um, we always, they always decorated a big tree. You know, the kids used, uh, you know, the paper, the paper chains and popcorn and tinsel and ornaments. And we didn't have a tree. So my sister and I asked, one day we asked, uh, what happens to the tree? And, the, and somebody said it's, uh, I think they just, you know, they, they put it away after it's done. So we asked if we could have it. My sister and I would, would uh, uh, bring that tree home and uh, my dad would cut it down to size because it was pretty big. And uh, that's the way we had our, our Christmases. But um, uh, I graduated from Longmont High School um, I went to the service after high school. I was in the Marine Corps, did four years there, had a good career. After the service, I went to work for Mart Marietta, which is a cement plant on Alliance, and I was there for 10 years. I started out as a laborer, and I ended up uh, being the first non-degreed uh, person to be hired into the lab. After 10 years, Mart Marietta was sold, and uh, I was one of the less senior people, so I was, I was a let go. And um, so I went into real estate and I uh, was working for Prudential and a friend of mine, he said, even if you sold a house today, 
you wouldn't probably get paid for three months. I think it was 90 days, 30 days to qualify on and on. He said, there's a lady that's looking for um, somebody to help her take her phones out or take her phones at night. And uh, she's a uh, bail agent, which I didn't know what that was. I talked to her and uh, she hired me and I've been doing that for 20, 26 years. Our parents taught us to, to uh, serve other people. I've got a sister that's the, in the school system, my older sister. I've got a sister that's a, uh, a PA at Centera. We all graduated from high school. Uh, one associate's degree, one bachelor's, one master's, and one. And I have a sister that's a doctorate in physical therapy. So my mom, my mother was very focused on education. I've been doing this for 26 years, uh, serving the community and, and uh, working with Marta Moreno, who is uh, El Comite. Yeah, Longma's been very, very good to us. Uh, Longma's been very kind to us, and uh, it's been wonderful to live here. I, I was away in the service for four years in California, which I loved, and after four years, I thought, I miss the mountains, I miss uh, Colorado. I could always visit the ocean, so I've been here, I've been here since. Happy birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to, to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Feliz cumpleaños, Longmont. Happy birthday, Longmont. My name is Juana Mendoza. I was 15 years old when I came here from Mexico. I was born in Boulder, but raised in Mexico. Came here when I was a teenager, 15 years old. What I remember of Longmont was the driving that we used to have on 17th Avenue. It was about the 1400 block of 17th Avenue. We used to be, um, have a station wagon. So my mom and my siblings, we all went to the drive-in and, and enjoyed the drive-in. Then the other thing that I remember also about Longman, Front Range Community College used to be where Kmart used to be on North Main, right in between 21st and 23rd. It used to be a small, a small, like a small mall there and Front Range Community College used to be there. The other thing that I'll never forget is my younger brother and younger sister, they always used to go rollerblading at the, at the roller arena, and that was on Sunset. The rollerblades they had back then was one of those that you would put your shoes in with four wheels, metal, and I remember they worked really hard during the week to earn money to go to the roller arena. My mom was a single parent with four of us, so it was hard, it was tough. My mom worked at the Longman Turkey plant for many years, and it was hard for my mom to come up with the money to send my siblings there. However, they managed to make enough money. My brother used to help a teacher um, you know, with her garden, so he would have money towards his roll arena ticket. The other thing that I'll, I also remember is we used to have migrants here. We used to have the Tanaka Farms and the Maida Farms. Um, there was a lot of migrant children that came to school when I was in school. Um, we used to go there and, and purchase their vegetables, fresh vegetables. The Tanaka Farm was um, South Main. The Maida Farm used to be on 3rd Avenue towards I-25. Not quite there, it was Well County Road 1 and 3rd um, Avenue there. The other thing too that I remember, um, and it was so nice to have the community up in open air. I mean, we still do that in Longmont. But we used to have um, gatherings where people would bring like baseball players if it was a baseball season. I remember the Rockies would come and sign their uh, little football cards. The police people used to go around and they would give children baseball cards with the football players. And it, on the back of the baseball card, it had infer tips on how to be safe were able to get into the low-income apartments on 600 Martin Street, and we lived there till we all, you know, got older and got married and moved away. Um, so we didn't move a lot. 
um, you know, we had that one place. And it was, uh, it was a great uh, place to be there because the, those apartments were for people that were not able to pay full rent. And you know, my mom working at the turkey plant, it was, it was hard to come up with a monthly rent and support for children. There used to be a J.C. Penney's on Main Street. My mother, whenever she would get paid and she could afford, she would go there and buy her some of her um, personal stuff that she would need from the J.C. Penney's. And she was so excited because coming from Mexico, I mean, we got here and there was like running water, a heater, the floor was not dirt, you know. It was, it was such an amazing thing to be here. In America, it's a dream for everybody. The only thing that I see sometimes is that sometimes people don't make those good choices when we come here. And what, it is, what I really love about it is the opportunity that they give us. When I came here, I didn't speak any English. I used to have a teacher, and she was a teacher said, Miss Phyllis Terones, she used to live in Iowa. So every weekend, she would take us, my siblings and myself, and uh, Korean students that she had, and the migrant people, Solomon, they, their parents used to be migrants. And um, they, she would take us to their house, and she would give us lunch and teach us English in her house. And she would not let us speak Spanish at all, or Korean, the girl that you spoke Korean. Um, she said, no, nope, this is an English class, so I want you to learn. So me, as you know, I was 15, but growing up and finished my high school, I always thought, that's what I want to do someday. I want to be able to help people that come here, regardless where, what race or whatever, wherever they come from, if I encounter them, I want to be able to help them like they did to us. Because when you move to a different country, it's like a fish when you change the water from the fish tank and you put them in new water. If you don't put the treatment in there, they go into culture shock. It's like, ah, what just happened here? So it was, um, I'm very grateful and thankful for that. And, and because of that, you know, all our siblings, we are somehow related to service. I work for Boulder County Housing and Human Services. I have two sisters that work for the school district. And my brother now is a sergeant with law enforcement. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a great experience. And we make sure that we always say, repeat that to people that, well, I, because we want to make sure that they're here and feel, yeah, this is America. It is a little different than where you come from. It's safe. It's safe to be here. Just be a good citizen and try to help out as much as you can, you know. My sisters and my brother, we all graduated from high, Skyline High School. I was, I was the first class that graduated from Skyline High School. So my brothers, my brother and my sisters graduated there. My nieces and my grandchildren, my granddaughter is going to graduate from Skyline High School. My children also graduated from Skyline High School. To me, it makes me feel good because when my granddaughter started going there to school, she saw my class, my graduation class picture on the wall, and she says, I saw your picture on the wall. Mm -hmm. So that was like really nice. And I said, yeah, and I hope to see yours too. And, and you know, two, three years later, she's going to get it done this year. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I also wanted to tell you that, um, you know, working for um, the Boulder County Housing and Human Services, I had a lot of opportunities to help uh, families that have come through the same how we did. And not just people from Mexico, people from everywhere, Asians. Um, you know, people, I had people from Czechoslovakia that I have worked with because I'm a program specialist, so I go, I help people find resources around the community so they can survive. Boulder County has a lot to offer. People need to take um, the help. And it's a, I tell my clients, it's a two-way street. You come this way and I go the other way. It's not just a one-way street because together we can build, we can do it. And, and, you know, just think. Once you have your settle, you have a stable place for you and your children, just think how wonderful that is for their education. They don't have to keep moving and then meeting new friends, and then that causes a little bit of trauma on children because they leave their friends behind and they're not set on one spot. I, tell, I always used to tell a girl that I work with, I said, remember, you build your own castle, and your, own castle, and your castle is not made out of sand. Nobody can come and just get rid of it. I said, it's, it's concrete. You have your foundation and you're gonna make it. And thank you so much for having me here today.
Happy birthday, Longmont. I'm, uh, I'm Ellie Neiswanger. I moved here in 1954 with my husband, who was the manager of a finance company called Central Finance. It was located in the 500 block of Main Street, across from the Trojan Theater. We came here from Denver, which was kind of a switch, but it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Been here ever since. I can, I can remember how friendly Longmont was at the time. It took no time at all to get acquainted. I wasn't even, I wasn't here a week when a lady rang my doorbell. She was from the welcome wagon. It was sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce, I think. And she came with a basket of goodies, the coupons and things from merchants around town. One thing uh, that came about after that, she introduced me to a club called the Newcomers Club, which met at the Callahan House once a month for dessert and coffee, cards if we wanted to play cards. From there, I met some lifelong friends. We, some of us formed an eight-person eight bridge club, and we played bridge for probably 50 years. Also, my husband joined JC's, which was a very, very active group here in Longmont. They did a lot of things for the city. And from there was formed the JC's auxiliary called the JCS. So I also met friends there. It took no time to get acquainted in Longmont. We joined the Elks Club. The Elks Club was the center activity in Longmont. They always had something going on. Many dances. My, my husband and I loved to dance. And we would go there for dinner and dancing probably once a month or so. And they had a, a great orchestra called Jay Weeder who came and played, and they were wonderful. People liked to dance back in those days. Kids nowadays, I don't think they'll know how to dance. But anyway, we danced a lot. And there was a club called the m, &M Dance Club, which you were inv invited to join if you wanted to. And uh, we would have dances at different places, usually with a dinner. One of the favorite places was the Wayside Inn in Berthoud. It was located right on Main Street. And next door to that was a church, which they purchased and used that for um, a wedding reception or um, whatever. But we rented it for dances. And we'd do that like four times a year, the fall, New Year's Eve, spring, and summer. There was a drive-in theater called the, I think it was called the Starlight, and we would go there, watch a double feature <laughs> for a little bit of nothing. You know, nothing cost anything in those days. When we first moved to town, we rented a little house on Baker Street, which was very, uh, rentals were not plentiful at all. We were lucky to find anything at all, that this was just a little house. And then in about two years, I think we bought a house up on Faith Court, brand new. And it was like a thousand square feet. I remember it cost $12,500. Our monthly payments were like $52 a month. And that included the insurance and the taxes. And then, of course, as our family grew, we moved into uh, different places. Ended up uh, at Fox Hill, on Fox Hill Golf Course. When I lived on Faith Court, which is right below Sunset Golf Course. That was the only golf course in town at that time. And uh, my husband played golf all the time. I decided if I was going to see him, I better learn how to play golf. So that's where I learned to play golf, on Sunset Golf Course. The so biggest grocery store well, was Safeway. It was on Main Street. There were neighborhood grocery stores, little ones. There was one on uh, Long's Peak and 
there were uh, there was one on the other side of town probably on Martin Street or something like that Ideal Market was not here yet when we came to town then the, then they moved in the corner pantry was here that was a bit, that was a very popular store at 9th and Main a Woolworth store was on 4th and Main we had a wool, nice Woolworth store I remember little dress shops down on Main Street, Elda's and uh, Marburg's, and they had beautiful clothes. You can't find clothes like that anymore. There was a little gift shop called the Marlou Gift Shop. It was run by two sisters. What her name? Their names were Margaret and Louise, I think, and they called it Marlou. You could buy beautiful gifts in there. Of course, the Trojan Theater. And then the, there was a, a Longmont Creamery where they sold ice cream. And that was, I think, in the 500 block on Main, too. There was a, a nice place to eat on North Main, about 15th or something like that. I'm trying, I think it was called the Fireside Inn. That was the only nice restaurant in town. There were drive-ins. As you're driving down 9th Avenue West, mm -hmm. Sunset was almost the edge. I think Hover Road was probably the city limits. But when we bought that house on Faith Court, which is like a block west of Sunset, we were on the edge of town. There was not much of anything on Ho past Hobart Road. IBM came, I think, in the late 60s. My husband was president of the Chamber of Commerce about that time. So he was quite active in, in that. But that's when the town began to grow. Not much before then. It was a little farming community. The farmers raised sugar beets in the fall, a big campaign, you know, get to process all the sugar beets. We used to have the Longmont Hospital, which was at 4th and, May, 4th and Kaufman. The St. Vrain Hospital was on 3rd and Kaufman. And then there was a little osteopathic hospital at 9th and Kimbark. And then, uh, the town was growing, so they had to have a bigger hospital, so they joined forces and built Longmont United. And the lower part of what you see over there now is the original hospital. And from that, uh, the hospital auxiliary formed. They used to perform um, plays and melodramas. And the profits would go to the auxiliary, which would go to the hospital. And that hospital was built, I think, in 1959. And then it's expanded and expanded and expanded. You know, a lot of the women in town joined the hospital auxiliary. We used to go to the county fair, which was held down at Roosevelt Park. There was a grandstand there. It's also where they played all the football games. Of course, we just had one high school. Everything went on at Roosevelt Park. They had the, all the exhibits for the county fair. Also, all the 4th of July fireworks were at Roosevelt Park. And we'd always walk down there and spread a blanket on the lawn and watch the fireworks. I would never live any place but Longmont. It's a wonderful place to live. I've enjoyed it since day one. Hopefully I will last, <laughs> I can stay here until the end.
hola, feliz cumpleaños para Longman, Colorado. Hola, soy Linda Nieto y vengo a felicitar a Longman, Colorado por su cumpleaños. Nosotros venimos a Colorado de migrants, Spanish. de migrants este, a trabajar en el campo con los sugar beets. Un año no hubo porque hubo un crop, una, algo de los crops y los comenzamos a trabajar, buscar trabajo y llegamos a la Longman, Longman Turkey Plant. De, éramos todos miners, pero los aceptaron porque they were necesitados de gente. Trabajé, ahí conocí a mi esposo, a los dos años los casamos y ha estado aquí en Longmont, uh, Colorado. Fui a la escuela, este, agarré mi GED gracias a Pat López y a Virginia Álvarez que tenían un programa aquí. Y después de eso, este, <coughs> que agarré mi GED, fui a la escuela para ser secretaria. Y comencé a trabajar en muchas comunidades para ayudar a los latinos en Longman, Colorado. Y todavía les ayudo mucho en interpretar, doctor, immigration, en lo que sea, es lo que hago. Um, trabajé, este, primero comencé a trabajar en Manpower, si estaba en Main Street. Después ahí duré como unos 5 o 6 años. Después me fui pa, para Salud Clinic y estábamos en la Kimbart, 515 Kimbart Street. Um, ahí teníamos una little white house, uh, two bedrooms, y de allí fuimos creciendo y creciendo, ayudándole a mucha gente, latinos y no latinos, les ayudábamos a mucha gente en su salud de ellos. <coughs> Después de allí, los fuimos para cruzar la calle que es... <coughs> Detrás de Michael Chase, ahí duramos otros cuantos años y, este, y estábamos creciendo mucho, mucha demanda de, de médico para la gente que no tenía aseguranza ni nada de eso. No hablaban inglés y no leían. Estábamos creciendo tanto que hicimos otra cambio para que está on night en Lashley. Ahí tuvimos más grandecito, pero todavía estábamos, ganábamos mucho demand de espacio. So, juntaron un dinero, hicimos una uh, clínica muy grande y muy bonita on Roger Road. No me acuerdo qué año, pero ahí he estado desde cuando, tiene muchos años. Yo trabajé con la Salud Clinic 15 años. Después de los 15 años que me salí de allí, este, fui a la escuela para CNA, agarré mi certificado de CNA. Trabajé 15 años con deshabilitados física y mental. Ahí trabajé muchos años también, otros 15 años. Ya de allí, pues me salí y ya me quedo en la casa y hago volunteer aquí y allá. Y ahí estoy enjoying mis años aquí en Longman, Colorado. Soy de Texas, original. Nací y me crié allá, pero... Creo que me gusta mucho aquí en Colorado, que no vuelvo a quedarme allá. Y es todo. Muchas gracias. Felicidades, Longmont. Longmont used to be a very small community and a um, very friendly community. And a lot of the times um, that we would come to Longmont, there was places, though, that didn't allow Hispanic people in at one time. Mm -hmm. But it got better and better because our population kept growing and growing and it got better and better and a lot of our kids were born and raised here and they speak both of the languages, which I'm very proud of. Their parents that teach both of the languages. Um, and. Um, <coughs> It was very small. The only bank that we had was the First National Bank that was on 5th and Main. And on Friday night, you would see all the turkey plant people walking from the turkey plant to the bank with their white boots and their white caps. And they, we knew who they worked. On weekends, we would cruise up and down Main Street and park, but that was a friendly cruising. 
waving at people and saying hi or parking by some street and having an ice cream or something. At one time I was a single parent with three kids, so it was pretty hard to get in, involved in all those things. Um, and um, at that time, it was really hard when you're a single parent. And I worked at the Salu Clinic all day, and then I would go to Kmart at night to support my three kids. I was one Mexican proud mother with no food stamps, no Medicaid, no welfare, nothing. I did it on my own. Because that's the way we were brought up. You need to work for what you want. I remember when there was a shooting on Main Street. It was right in front of the cemetery. Two Hispanic kids were running. I don't know where they were running, what they did or anything, but uh, they were running and the police officer shot them in the back. And that was a no-no with a lot of people in Longmont. I mean, they got together, they did meetings, they did um, walkings, protests, and the whole thing. We even started El Comité, which is still active, and it helps a lot of people. Whatever they need, housing, paperwork, whatever they need, they help there. We started that with Ed Navarro and a lot of other people there. Um, and we were on the board. I was one, one time I was a vice president. Uh, they all came together, white people, Hispanic, all black people, they all came together. And we supported each other and we still do. Police officers do a good job in Longmont now. You know, they, it's, it's a good, good, nice town. Feliz cumpleaños, Longmont. Yo soy Virginia Álvarez y he vivido aquí toda mi vida. I went to school here. I graduated from Longmont High in uh, 1961. And I've been involved in different community things. I worked for Community Action Center for several years with the Senior Citizen Program. And then the bilingual program came into St. Vrain Valley School District. And they needed someone who was bilingual, fluent in Spanish. So I thought, oh, they're looking for me. <laughs> and I applied and I got hired. And I worked with all the Hispanic community enrolling their children in school. My parents lived in the rural area of Longmont. I, uh, they, were far, they were farm workers. And us, when we went to school at uh, Pleasant View Ridge on County Line Road 1. We only went there till we were in the seventh grade. And this is a real hard for people to believe that that school board paid taxis to go pick us up at home and bring us in to Columbine. So at Columbine, I was there till eighth grade. Then I went to Longmont High School, and there is where I graduated. And from there, I just uh, worked with different things, mostly senior citizens, because I guess I love them. I really enjoyed that job. We provided translation for them, and I provided transportation to doctors for them. And uh, once a month, we had them all together for a potluck. Each one of the seniors brought a plate of food. 
It was the best meals we ever had <laughs> because there were good cooks. From there, I, I went to the St. Brain Valley School District to work, also with a, bilingual, with a bilingual community. And uh, we had classes in Erie, Frederick, Columbine. So then we extended them to other schools. And there I, I, I worked with the district for 20 years. And then I retired, and now I'm free. I can do whatever I want. So what every Longmont teenager used to like. We would drag Maine from 3rd Avenue to Johnson's Corner, which was 9th. And that's what we did on Friday nights. And that was the only time I had time with my friends. And we knew how to drive. So we would just drag Ma Maine. That was the fun we had. We parked at Corner Pantry. And all our friends met us there. <laughs> it was just a joyous time. And it wasn't until after I graduated that I had a little more freedom. And um, I, then I went to work in Boulder for Esquire magazine. And there I worked till after I got married. I met Tom, that's my husband's name. It was a blind date. And we were going to a, a party. And, we, and from there on, I, I, we kept seeing each other. And so then we, we decided to get married after a couple of years. And we married at St. John's in Longmont. And we've been married for 53 years. We had two children. Our daughter is the oldest. Her name is Bernadette. And our youngest is Carlos. And both of them are married. Um, they don't have any children. My son graduated from Skyline. And so did Bernadette. So she is a dental hygienist. And Carlos works for the district, St. Brain Valley School District. Thomas worked at Ball Aerospace. And he was there for almost 30 years. I remember when the two boys in Longmont were shot. And it just gives me the chills to think about that. I knew both families. And it was a very sad situation. And I just hope it never happens again. I don't remember people discriminating against me personally, but I knew there was that happening, you know. And I remember my parents talking about it uh, when they came and seeing white trade only signs all over Longmont. So they lived through that. And I just lived through that because they said it happened, you know. But I didn't actually see it. But there's always been a little bit of that in Longmont. Mm -hmm. I came from a family of seven children. We were all born out east of Longmont on the farms. So we, we were all raised out in the country. My father worked in the beet fields. And he would get up early in the morning at 4.30 to go to the beet fields. My mother used to fix uh, burritos for him and take uh, burritos to, his, to the field so he could have breakfast. And us kids, w she wouldn't, we wouldn't eat at home. We wanted, her, we wanted to eat her burritos with dad so she would make enough for all of us. I, I think oh, we, were, we should have been eating cereal or something. But no, we ate the burritos with dad at the end of the field. The, you know, and we'd sit there. and. and during school time, after we got home, we used to go up to work in the fields to help my dad. So, and that was just on County Line Road, the Rasmussen Farm, or the Labor Farm. My dad and mom were the ones that got paid. We didn't, in those days, we just went to help my dad, you know. We didn't get any money out of it. We, we, we had food to eat and clothes to wear. We didn't start getting, I guess, Americanized. <laughs> till we were older, you know. And they, um, both my parents joined in though. They, you know, it was just, they were from Mexico. They came from Mexico in 1921 to Longmont. My oldest sister lived in Longmont. My brother moved to Lafayette because that's when his, where his wife was from. And then my, uh, the sister that's 
older than I was older than I. She went to live in California when she got married, and um, then my brother, my two younger brothers, had a body shop here in town, Rocky Mountain Paint and Body, and they, that was a good business for them. They did very well, and my younger sister uh, married, and she worked at IBM, and then she moved to North Carolina. And all of them are gone except myself and my younger sister. That's it. They all passed away. Happy birthday, Longmont. My name's Rick Jennings. Uh, I'm a native of Longmont, born and raised. Born in the old hospital that was at, uh, what, Kaufman and Fourth. Uh, there's a bank building there now, but uh, I certainly recall that. Uh, and I recall getting my tonsils out there, as a matter of fact, when I was five years old, four years old, something like that. Uh, I lived the first year of my life on a ranch up the uh, North St. Vrain. Uh, it was called Skyline Ranch. Uh, it's now uh, Pinewood Springs. Um, and we, we, my dad had 180 acres on the, uh, be the north side of the road. And he used to raise Christmas trees there. Um, and another thing I remember about growing up is my, uh, besides raising Christmas trees, when we moved to town after I was about a year old, uh, we lived on Judson Street in the 300 block, just off of 3rd Avenue. Uh, then shortly thereafter, uh, we needed a little bigger place, so we moved to 8th and Grant, which is still considered to be Old Town, although at the time it was New Town because all the construction was just going on there when we moved in. Uh, what I remember is we had a big privacy fence around the backyard, and my dad wholesaled Christmas trees every year. So uh, there'd be a semi pull in, they'd load off 500 or 1,000 Christmas trees into the backyard, stacked up, and we'd run around in the backyard between the big stacks of Christmas trees and it smelled great. It was, it was a great time. I say I lived a beaver cleaver uh, kind of childhood uh, because we lived in a great little neighborhood. There was probably 15 kids all about the same age and we just ran and played. It was really was uh, an ideal way to grow up. I, I am so grateful for the way uh, I grew up in Longmont. And we, one of the things I remember about living there is that we lived about four blocks from Roosevelt Park. Um, and in those days, Roosevelt Park, they had the uh, Boulder County Fair there, and there was a big grandstand. Uh, we had uh, just great times. And since it was so close, we could walk over to the, to the fair every day as, as kids. Um, and um, I think we got into trouble, but I'm not sure. I'm sure it wasn't very serious. Uh, I remember playing on the tractors they used to bring in and all the critters that used to be in the barns uh, along where the skating rink is now and along in there. Um, in fact, we used to skate in those barns uh, in the winter. Uh, there used to be like three or four livestock barns where the, where the skating rink is, and there's still one of the barns there that they use for uh, keeping vehicles in now and stuff. Uh, but one of those, they'd, they'd flood every winter, and we'd skate inside the one of the kind of barns or sheds or whatever they were. I, I remember that very well. Uh, um, and one of the things about my father, whose name was Harold Jennings, uh, built the stock, well, we called it the stockade, it was the name of it. It's the uh, log building that's at the corner of 15th and Main. Um, and when I say he built it, he actually did. He uh, brought the logs down from up the North St. Vrain, uh, skimmed the logs, and built the log building. It didn't have the porch on it that did now. What I remember about it is that there was probably, between the front of the building and Main Street, it was probably 100 feet then. Now it's about 12 feet uh, because it was just a two-lane street. There was nothing else there. The armory wasn't out there then. 
Uh, he built it and then sold furniture out of it. It's called the Stockade. Did that for um, quite a while. And the furniture they stole, this is another, was from Nowell's Knotty Pine, which was Knotty Pine furniture that was built in Longmont. Originally, the, I think the, the plant for it was right where Stockade is, and then they moved that to what would be, oh, I think 15th and Gay is where it is now. I don't remember a lot more about my father. He died when I was 11, so. After the, the Stockade, he worked at a place called Cyclone Filter, which is now where Circle Graphics is. My mother and my grandmother were both teachers at Longmont High. Uh, they both taught English. Um, I think they started probably in the 40s. Uh, my mom taught till she got married in 48 and then quit and then started again when my dad got sick in the, in the late 50s. And I was the first, in the first class, the class of 67, uh, that went all the way through the new Longmont High. That, well, it was new then, it's the old one now. Uh, that was on, uh, that's on Francis Street, just off Francis and Sun between Francis and Sunset. You know, my childhood and my high school years, I remember very fondly. Longmont was a great place. It was probably, you know, 12, 15, 17,000, I think it was 16, 17,000 when I graduated, something like that. It was a small town um, and it felt even smaller. Uh, interestingly enough, I, I moved out of town for about 10 years and then came back. Uh, I went to law school and all that and then came back um, and that was in the 90s. I came back in 2000 and uh, Longmont was different. I bought a house in the 300 block on Sumner Street, which is Old Town, and I, uh, it reminded me so much of, the, of growing up in Longmont. Um, uh, we were, that was a part of town I, I uh, originally lived in. We lived in uh, for about four years on Judson Street, which is just down. And then, and we lived next door to, there's the old memories coming back, left door to a family called the Holmeses, who had Holmes Family Shoes, which was on Main Street, uh, 400 block west side. Uh, they were, it was a small shoe store, that, or a family shoe store that was there forever. Ron Holmes was my best friend forever. I met him when I was one year old, when we moved from uh, Pinewoods or the stuff from the Skyline Ranch on down to Longmont. Um, they lived next door to us and then we moved over on Grant and within oh, six months or so, uh, the Holmeses had moved about a half a block away up 8th Avenue. Off just, so I knew him all, all my life. And I remember something about Holmes Family Shoes that was kind of, it had a fluoroscope in there, you could go in put your feet in it and look at the bones in your feet. I went to school, graduated in 1967. Uh, I'm currently um, kind of the de facto chairman, I guess, of the reunion committee. Uh, after the last 50th reunion we had a few years ago, they dumped everything on me, so I guess I'm uh, taking care of that. Went to school to teach and I came back and, and substituted for a while at Niwot High. By then my mother had transferred to Niwot High uh, from Longmont High when they opened Niwot. Well, when I was in high school, we, we all, uh, what we did for fun is drive up and down Main Street. We could, we could put 100 miles on a car on Main Street and burn maybe $2 worth of gas. We'd drive from one end of Main to the other and we'd always cruise through the Black Angus, uh, which was on Main Street, and Hamburger Haven. Um, and then uh, we'd head up to the North Johnson's Corner, uh, which was at 17th and Main. Longmont had a big car, car, car culture back in those days, uh, and I was, my brother was into it a little bit more than I was, but I, I remember going out to Airport Road and racing cars, and uh, it was kind of almost like you'd see in the movies where people pull off in the Barrow Ditch, and we'd race from the railroad track down to a uh, feed bag that was on one of the posts. That was a quarter mile, and uh, we'd figure that out, and, and then the cops would show up, and so everybody leave in a hurry. Uh, that, that was part of growing up in, in Longmont was the car culture. There was a, another uh, uh, drive-in we used to go to, Walt's Patio Drive, where, was, where the five-story first bank is now. It was a, uh, and that was one of the turnaround spots before we'd head back down Maine. Um, but, uh, there weren't lots of restaurants in Longmont. There was Gene's uh, uh, Texas uh, Burgers, Texas, uh, which is right across from the old high school. Uh, and they had Longhorn uh, sandwiches, which 
to an open face hamburger covered with chili and cheese. Uh, everybody loved jeans. Uh, they seated about 12 people at a time, I think. Um, and they were from Texas and they made great pies. You know, we didn't go out and eat very often. It was a treat when we went to Jeans or something. You know, every once in a while we'd go to Jeans and have a, a Longhorn or a Shorthorn. Um, let's see. Oh, and I remember the uh, the movie, the Trojan Theater, which is. Uh, and I remember when uh, when they came in and sold. Uh, and they changed the name from the. It was the Fox before it was the Trojan, and then they changed the name to the to the Trojan. Um, and that was a big deal. And that's where we all went Friday nights in high school. We'd go and sit and uh, whatever girl you were kind of liking, you'd go try to sit next to her. And maybe if you got risky, you'd hold her hand. Or uh, I don't think there was a lot of making out going on in the theater back in those days. Uh, I remember the drive-in. I remember driving in with uh, several people stashed in the trunk of my car. Uh, we used to, you know, because it probably cost a quarter to get in or 50 cents, and so we'd uh, put two people in the front and three people in the trunk and uh, sneak into the drive-in. I hope the statute of limitations has gone and all this stuff. Uh, and uh, so I, yeah, I do remember this guy. Yeah, you know, when I was uh, young and living on Grant Street, we used to come over to Lou Miller, where Lou Miller Pond is now, across from the high school. That was all just field. Um, and, and reeds and swamp in there, and we'd go beat around in the swamp and catch frogs and minnows and all kinds of little creatures that were in there. Uh, had a great time doing that. Uh, once I got old enough, I could cross Ninth Avenue. The, in fact, I can remember uh, vaguely uh, coming up Ninth Avenue and the pavement stopped at Bowen. It was gravel past Bowen Street going west. Uh, and it got paved not too long ago, but I can remember being on the gravel road down there uh, at right at Bowen and on Ninth Avenue. There was a house there that had one of the old gas pumps uh, that that were the, the glass on the top where you'd put in your silver dollar or whatever it took and it would fill it up with gas and then you'd pump it into your car. Uh, I often wondered if the people that live there now know that there was probably a gas tank buried in there. That whole area of town, that is part of Old Town now, I, I laugh because it was Newtown when I when I grew up, and so I uh, I kind of think I'm I'm so old that where I Newtown is now Old Town. Uh, I remember the old waiting pool at at uh, Roosevelt. Oh yeah, which was not where the waiting pool is now, uh, and that brought up a memory of Sunset um, Swimming Pool, which was. Uh, Sunset Swimming Pool at the time was a lake uh, that was cold because it it's a lake, it wasn't heated. Uh, and they had just roped off part of it where they had kind of cleaned it out so it was deep enough and they had a cement wall on one side where you could dive off of. Uh, and the rest of it was just cold, sandy bottom lake. Uh, it was kind of shock to me when they decided to build an actual swimming pool up there. Uh, I tried to learn to swim there, but it was always too cold. I never could. I had to learn in a heated pool someplace else years later. Uh, I remember playing golf up at Sunset when, it, when Sunset was the only uh, golf course in town, the little nine-hole course. And my, my mom played golf all the time. She was uh, part of the uh, Women's Golf, Women's Sunset Golf Association. I think she was the president one year. They played thir every Thursday morning, all the women would go out and play golf. I remember that. And then she started me playing when I was probably, oh, not probably eight years old, maybe started playing eight or nine, uh, maybe 10. And uh, I, I gave it up. Uh, it was uh, too frustrating for me. My dad was a fly fisherman uh, from back in the 40s. Although he died when I was 11 or so, he did instill in me that kind of passion for fishing and everything. And I started fly fishing in high school and continued doing it uh, a lot up until, oh, I was in my 40s, then I moved out of state for a while, and kind of haven't gotten back into it. But I'm thinking, now that I'm an old fart, I get that dollar a year fishing license, uh, I need to take advantage of it. Uh, along with my $10 uh, lifetime pass to the Rocky Mountain National Park, Another thing that's so great about living in Longmont is that you're so close to such a great resource, the park and everything up along in there. Many people in Longmont had cabins in Allen's Park and in Raymond and everything, and we never did, but I remember going up and visiting them all the time. That was what you did in the summer is uh, you'd go up and, and hang out in either Allen's Park or 
uh, Raymond and, and, and around in there. Uh, I remember where they building all the roads up in North and South St. Vereen, because uh, I remember going through the old, old road up the North St. Vereen, you had to go through Raymond and everything, all those little bitty towns. And so, uh, and the same with, I remember when they opened up the diagonal between here and Boulder, and then all of a sudden, you could get to Boulder in 15 minutes instead of taking 40 minutes. Almost half the kids I knew lived on farms or they lived in town and their dads owned farms around town. There was the Kugels that lived next door to us. They were big farmers in town, uh, flying farmers. They both had planes. I remember, uh, remember that. They called themselves the flying farmers. There was a club of them or something. Uh, and there was the Johnsons that lived behind us that had a big farm about where uh, Silver Creek is now. Uh, Silver Creek High School, that was all farmland. I remember going out and bucking bales and understanding why I was glad I wasn't a farm kid. Uh, uh, they had to work. <laughs> I had it pretty easy as a kid, you know. Happy birthday, Longmont. Hi, I'm Sandy Halloran Ostrander, and I came to Longmont in 1957 with my family and my two brothers. We moved from Minnesota. And when we came here, I remember thinking, oh, the streets were just huge. <laughs> they were just really wide. We'd never seen such wide streets before. And, um, my brothers thought it was kind of like the wild, wild west, you know, with the cowboys and everything. <laughs> um, so that was really strange uh, for us. Um, we moved to an acreage, um, which was um, on Hygiene Road, and it's now called 17th. And we had horses there and Angus cattle, and we lived right across from Jaeger's uh, acreage and uh, that is now a development there off of 17th. There are many things I remember. Um, I do remember some special buildings in Longmont um, and one is still there. The library, um, the little Carnegie Library, <laughs> um, it, which is now just dwarfed by the other library. But it was, it was just, a, I thought, a sweet library and uh, I spent lots of time there, you know, Saturday afternoons <laughs> usually. Um, and I was glad when I moved back here uh, after our 40th reunion and I married Arlie Ostrander, um, I was glad to see that it was still there, that it hadn't been taken down. Um, another building that I remembered in Longmont um, was the Teenage Canteen. And it was a little wooden structure behind the bleachers, which were here in, in Roosevelt Park. Um, Roosevelt Park had a large set of bleachers, and that's where we had football games, and that's where the county fair was held and all that. But um, when we came to football games, um, that's where we sat on those bleachers that were still there. And then there was a canteen behind it. So after the games, um, on Friday or Saturday night, we would go there, and there was a couple there that uh, were hired, I suppose, by the city, um, and they were husband and wife, and they were there as our chaperones. And so that was a place we could go to dance. I think we had ping pong tables set up there too, and um, maybe a pool table, I can't quite remember. Um, but that was, that was a neat thing to have. And then um, as far as in Roosevelt Park area, then, then when the um, new memorial building was built, then that's where we ended up having our, our proms, our junior and senior proms were there, and basketball games that my husband Arlie played in the basketball games there. And we had, in high school, we had a, a pep club and we wore off-white wool blazers and 
navy blue pleated skirts and we all sat together and cheered you know and we had cheerleaders too i remember other things about the downtown um there weren't any really what we call big box stores or anything like that. It was chain stores then, but probably J.C. Penney's would be the only one. And um, otherwise, there were just small little shops and independent stores, which were, you know, kind of fun. Uh, lots of drug stores. And there was one drug store that had um, booths in it. And so we went there mostly during um, junior high years and um, we'd go in there um, and play the little jukeboxes that were right at each booth and um, drink like Green Rivers I think and Black Cows and Cherry Cokes you know things like that so um, that was fun and then there was a music store I think it was called Bachman's and they had little booths you could go into it was almost like a phone booth, and um, you could get the 45s that you wanted to listen to. It was probably Elvis at that time, you know, um, and the Beatles maybe, I don't know. But anyway, uh, you'd get your favorite record, and you could go into that little booth and listen to it, you know, and it was just really cool. You know, it was just a tiny little booth. It was like two of us could fit in there, and it was so cool. Unfortunately, we probably didn't buy many. <laughs> I don't remember buying too many, but they were very patient with us there. <laughs> so that was fun. And then I remember that the girls, too, uh, I can't exactly remember when... Um, like jeans came in for girls, you know. I mean, we didn't wear them to school. We always wore pleated skirts, skirts and sweaters and all that kind of stuff. But um, on the weekends, then we could wear, you know, we wore jeans. But there was a shop downtown Shies, and they just carried men's clothing. But um, some of my girlfriends and I, we would go in and then we, th they'd let us try on the boys' jeans. <laughs> so they had these little uh, areas where it was just like, it's just the little curtains, you know. <laughs> but you could see everybody's feet underneath as you're trying on all these jeans. And Mr. Sh uh, Chick, Chick Clark um, was someone who was like one of the managers there, I think. And he was very, very good with all of us girls, too. And so we'd go in and try on all these jeans. It was just funny. And I remember it was, I thought it was very windy here when we moved to Colorado. <laughs> and we lived out on the acreage. And I was probably always on the committee where they were doing decorating for the dances and stuff. Well, anyway, we were trying to do it on the cheap. So... Um, <laughs> It was so windy that it blew all these big tumbleweeds, I mean huge tumbleweeds, into our yard um, and right into our fence line uh, from across the field and everything. So we gathered all those up and sprayed them <laughs> white and thought they looked kind of lacy or something. So we used that for a, um, a Valentine's dance, I remember. You know, it was just only, only could be done here. <laughs> I'm sure you'll hear all about, you know, dragging Maine, which was something everybody did. And uh, you always wanted to see who was in the other cars. And that was something to do after the games or just on weekends when there wasn't anything else going on. Um, other than that, we went to the drive-in in the summer and swimming uh, uh, up at sunset. And that was just uh, like a pond. Um, it just had a... a dirt bottom, mud bottom. Thinking about life in Longmont at that time, um, it really revolved around school and activities and church, you know, activities, that kind of thing. But as I look back on it, I think, it, you know, it was kind of um, like a Happy Days kind of the TV show <laughs> in the 50s. I, I just, you know, as I reminisce, I think that it's more like that than I had realized.
Happy birthday, Longmont. My name is Gail Thomas Weck, and I was born in the Longmont Hospital, right down on 3rd and Main. And I have lived in Longmont all my days. And uh, we were all poor. We were all poor. It was just after the Dust Bowl and the Depression, 1930. And uh, the first place I lived was out there across from Sandstone Ranch. And um, there was a little house across the street. My sister got to go to school. I didn't get to go. So I cried. I started school at four years old. And then we moved. Daddy had to move wherever there was a job. We lived on uh, 627 Kaufman. I remember that because mother drilled it into us. Where we live is 627 Kaufman. There weren't any phones. That was your identity. Oh, I loved Longmont. You had, we had those roller skates that you clamped on your shoes and uh, there were kids in the neighborhood and we played with those kids. And um, it was fun. But I was in kindergarten. Then we moved, and we moved over on close to Vermilion Road, straight down Hover Road, dirt road, nothing there. And we lived there in that, it was a big, big, awful house. And, uh, but I liked it. And then I went to Armstrong School. They said, um, we don't have a first grade, but you can be in the second grade. So I was in the second grade. And that's what happened. Oh, school was lovely. There were two rooms, first, second, third, and fourth in one room, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth in the other room. We all got together and sang uh, God Bless America every morning, every morning. And Mrs. Ellison played the piano, and Miss Elliot uh, led the singing. And then we went to our classes, and you had a tablet. You had crayons. You had pencils. You didn't have anything else. But they had books, and they passed them out. We used the same books over and over again. When you got to school, you could, uh, you could help the teacher uh, put coal in the furnace. You could help the teacher dust the blackboards. You could go beat the, the erasers, beat them out. And it, it was fun. And the other part was good. They had a swing. Oh, they had two swings and a teeter-totter that we weren't used to. We played hopscotch, marbles, and jacks. And sometimes we played ball. I had two sisters, yeah. And uh, Joe was younger, Lois was older. But the chores we had to do. Every morning, Lois and I would take these cows out on Hover Road, graze along the ditch bank. And, uh, and then we would... Uh, get our books and go up there to where the cows were supposed to stop. And one day, the cows went past us and they got into Hover Gardens. And oh, we thought we'd be in trouble, but the ladies at Hover Garden chased the cows out, chased them home. We got to go into their house and have tea. And it was exciting, it was exciting. <laughs> and we didn't get in trouble. And other chores, we, uh, we had two cows, two calves. And other chores, every morning you had to give them a little grain. You had to pump water for the cows. We had chickens, and we had to gather the eggs. Lois or I always did the dishes. On our way to school, Dad made us all wear boots and these god-awful cotton stockings. On the way to school, we would ditch those in the, in the culvert along the ditch. 
And uh, then on the way home, we put them back on so Dad didn't know that we had ditched them all day. As far as e uh, eating out, we never did, never. But Mom made a loaf of homemade bread when we got home from school. And uh, it was so good. And then there were, the flour came in big sacks that were printed and, and she, could, she could sew very well. So she made dresses out of those. When I was in the probably fourth grade, I was telling Carol about this. I was in a spelling contest and my teacher took me to Boulder for this spelling contest. And she said, let's go for lunch. And I thought, oh, wonderful. I'd never eaten out much. And so she said, whatever you want on the menu. Uh, I ordered a Swiss steak. <laughs> that wasn't what she planned, I don't think. <laughs> she thought uh, maybe a hamburger. <laughs> anyway, it was fun. The other place we ate sometimes was was at Williams Cafe in Longmont, Hughes Waffle Inn, Waffle Inn. Yes, and I worked there a little bit. Uh, I could carry the plates of waffles to the people. But what I remember about that is <laughs> he walked around the whole time. This is on Main Street. It's hot. The doors were open. He walked around with a fly swatter all the time and killed the flies and wiped where the fly was. And people did come to eat. And Safeway, too, it was open. There were flies in Safeway. There were flies everywhere. The thing I remember best when we lived in Longmont, we started going to the library. And uh, we loved the library. And every Saturday, Mom got the car. Daddy had the other days. And we would come to town. And he would, uh, Mom would buy something at McClellan's and uh, we would walk up and down the street and go to the library. But what I remember about this McClellan's, <laughs> there was a thing that you opened it and um, you could reach in and get a cookie. Think of COVID. <laughs> and mom always made cookies, but these were marshmallow type, sticky, gooey, cookies that I'd reach in there and you could only take one and I would take one but it was a uh, really treat. There were barber poles along Main Street um, where the men went to the barber shop I think. Later on we moved over to Highway 66 and that's where my teenage years were spent but um, I should tell you, Armstrong School burned down one when I was in the seventh grade. And we got to go to Longmont. In those days, you had to pay, if you were rural, you had to pay $10 a semester to let your kids go to Longmont. And uh, I loved that school. Um, it was big and exciting. And there was an open bridge that you could walk across from art to study hall, and uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I can remember a lot about school, but mostly I remember uh, my teachers, Miss Ellicott and Miss Edson, um, Delola McCarty, McCart was a teacher of mine, and uh, they were s such good teachers. So. Uh, enthusiastic. Once upon a time, I think you could only hire a single woman to teach school. I, I don't know why, you know, think of the hard work they did. Sweep the floor, put fuel in the furnace. We had outdoor toilets. Uh, they had to clean those every morning and uh, kind of sanitize them. Uh, I, I just don't know how those teachers managed to do all that work. I really don't. 
and they, they taught four grades. Whatever grade you want to be in, <laughs> I think you could listen to the first grade. You could catch up on what you didn't catch on. You could listen to the third grade. You could be ahead. Um, Main Street used to be on Saturday when we drove to town. You could um, park anywhere. Ours was a 37 Ford, I think. Oh, we, the, the radio. We had a radio. I, I think it was a battery operated radio, so you couldn't listen much. But oh, I dashed home to listen to Jack Armstrong, the all-American boy. And then Daddy liked to watch some uh, political commentator at night. And we would all gather around there and listen to that like it was exciting. <laughs> and then um, the radio was turned off. Probably it was a battery radio. I don't know. I don't think there was any electricity because I can remember when Daddy bought a refrigerator. Mother was very frugal and uh, Daddy bought the refrigerator home and, uh, and Mom said you could have bought another cow with that money. And uh, he said, but I, I would like homemade ice cream every day. So that's, <laughs> that's what sold her on the refrigerator. She made ice cream every day. I married Russell right out of high school, and uh, we moved there. That farm I live on is beautiful, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it's a good place to live. I wouldn't move, and I wouldn't move to a big city. No, I would stay there. And I'm glad I'm here.